everyone, welcome to this fourth and final episode on our series on secure external collaboration in Microsoft 365. Now, if you tuned in for part three, I introduce you to a really cool feature in Azure Active Directory called B2B Direct Connect, which is absolutely awesome in its own right. But one of the things that this allows is the use of something called Teams Shared Channels. Now, I don't know about you, but one of the most annoying things about Teams is if you joined a team as a guest or a, a collaborator in one pot, you had to log out and log back in, and, and it was very, very cumbersome. And also, there are maybe situations where you don't want the guest to have external access to the entire team. Well, before we couldn't do that, but now we can. So in this episode, we're going to take a look at exactly what it is and how it works. Now, as I've mentioned, this episode is brought to you today by Syskit, and they can help you solve your everyday admin problems with their Microsoft 365 management and governance platform, Syskit Point. So without any further ado, I think it's about time we got a look at the demos. Let's have a look. So I'm going to kick off my demo here in Azure Active Directory. And the thing that we looked at on part three of this series was the new external identities feature in Azure Active Directory. And specifically, we talked about cross tenant settings. And if you've not seen that video, then what we'll do is we'll put in a link below and that will allow you to go in and uh, view it. But essentially what we've done here is I've got this B2B direct connect settings and it's basically opening everything up. Now, as well as this particular tenant here, um, I've also got a partner tenant and this is going to be our partner here. And this company's called Contoso, whereas the other company is called a datum. Okay. So we're going to kick off here in a datum. And one of the first things that we're going to want to do, or I should just tell you what I've done is I've gone into my, um, groups here in Microsoft 365 and in the groups what I've done is I've just gone ahead uh, I've created a group called Syskit Corp so I'm just going to pop into the group here and just show you exactly what I've done and you're probably thinking Andy I thought we were talking about teams and do remember that teams are groups groups are teams in fact a team is just an extension of a Microsoft 365 group so what I've done in here is I've added in some members and you can see I've just got internal users here at the moment in my uh, tenant and um, I can view the site in SharePoint. I can also view the site in Microsoft Teams as well. Um, one of the things you probably want to do, though, is if you want to allow external collaboration is you need to go into the settings on the group and say, let people outside the organization email the team. And you want to send copies of events and emails to various team members and things like that. Now, as we've also discussed in this series, I also talked about the importance of external file sharing. And you can see that this uh, flows down from uh, SharePoint. And again, if you've not seen this, go ahead and see the, I think it's the first episode that we looked at. Okay. And you got a couple of options here. Teams conversations, allow members to edit uh, their messages and allow members to delete their messages. So this is a little bit like the difference between WhatsApp and Facebook. You know, if you do a, a message in WhatsApp, you can't then delete it where, or you rather you can't edit it. Whereas in Facebook you can. So if you, that's just a personal option. If you want those options, that's fine. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to set that up there. All right. So I've now set my team up. Okay, now, just again, just before we continue, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come over into my Teams client. So this is the Teams client, and you can see that this is the Syskip Corp team that I've gone ahead and have set up. And I've just put in a couple of extra channels here. So out of the box, you know that um, I can, for example, go in here, and typically I can add in either a private 
or a standard channel. So a standard channel is essentially public and anybody can view it. And a private channel, of course, is only specific team members. For example, in this case, I've created one called managers or management rather. All right, so that's the first thing there. Now, um, so that's part part one. Now, the question is, uh, typically, if I wanted to add in guests, so the typical way, of course, is you would go in here, and you would go in and you would manage the team, and you would uh, invite a guest, and you would put in the user's email address in here, and it would basically bring them in as a guest. And the problem with that, though, is that when you do that, um, they get full access to the team. So, you know, you may not want that. All right. So what's the alternative? Well, the alternative is this. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop uh, back into uh, 365 and I'm going to go into the Teams Admin Center. So shared channels is essentially a feature that's in public preview at the moment. And to switch this on, there's just a couple of little things that you need to do. So I'm going to come into my Teams Admin Center and I'm going to come into my Teams Update Policies and I'm going to go into the organization-wide policy. Now we have something here called Office Preview and just uh, make sure that that's enabled, that's on, and then you'll be able to see the various updates. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into Teams Policies. And in this case, I've just got a global wide policy. Again, you may want to restrict this only to certain users or certain groups. And you can do that if you want to. I'm going to go into the global wide policy. And you can see that we've now got some options on shared channels. So you can create shared channels, invite external users to shared channels, join external channels and so on. So I've gone ahead and I've actually uh, gone ahead and switched those on. Now, the next thing then is um, what if, how do I create a shared channel? Well, that's a great uh, question. So because here you see I can't create a shared channel. Ah, but what you can do is if you come up here to the little ellipse here just beside the username uh, and you click on here, there is an option here that says about and if you go click on public preview and this now switches the tenant to or the client rather into public preview. All right. So off we go, and I'm going to put this into public preview. Now, remember that some of these features, anything that's in public preview is typically beta format. So it may not be a 100% right or this maybe the odd bug in it, but generally it's, it's pretty good. Now, you'll see that on the top right hand corner here, we've got a little P, which indicates that this is currently in a public preview, which is awesome. Okay. And the next thing that we want to do then is come down to our team and we now want to create a new channel. So I'm just going to click on the ellipse here and I'm going to go ahead and create a channel. Um, so this channel, um, we're going to call this um, my external um, collab. Okay. So we're going to call this external collab and again what type of channel is this going to be well now you can see that we have this additional option here which says um, shared people you choose from your organization or other organizations have access and you can share this channel with everyone in your team or just specific teams if you want to so I'm just going to leave that as it is and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create this channel now. OK, so um, who do I want to share the channel out with? OK, so I might have, for example, some um, sales people in my organization. So I want to share it with um, Isaiah. I might want to share it with Christy. Uh, I might want to share it with Alan and so on. So you can share it uh, internally as well. Now, one of the things you might want to do, though, is you might want to, in fact, I'll go ahead and I'll share this team first. 
okay so I've now created the shared channel but of course it's just created the shared channel for people within my team yes and you can see the difference between the little icons here external collab now has a little um, I suppose a little link you might call it here all right now just you, you might think okay well where is all of this information stored Andy well that's a good question so if I go back into 365 and I'm going to open up SharePoint here and I'm going to come into active sites and if I scroll right down um, of course I'm looking for Syskit and you can see that Syskit caught here but look at this it's actually saying that it's got two sites so if we now click onto that and what you're seeing is um, of course the team gets a website but also because I've created a private channel that also gets a sub what you call a sub site I suppose but also the collaboration channel you can see that it creates an additional shared channel here as well and in fact if you want to go in here uh, and it talks about if you want to manage this channel uh, go to the team's admin center if you want to manage it so for things like permissions um, any of those kind of sharing policies you can see that uh, it kind of anything that you've set at the primary team site will essentially waterfall down uh, to that but just to show you that that's uh, where the actual channels are stored in SharePoint all right Okay, so heading back to our team, the next thing, of course, is you might want to invite an external user, okay? Um, now, you can do this from the admin center. So again, I can come into the teams here. And again, I can scroll down and here's Syskit Corp here. And if I click into this, you can see that I'm just at the moment uh, bringing in um, various internal users here so I can go ahead and I can say hey you know I want to add in another member here um, I can again view the channels the different channels here so I can see that there and I can click on to the external collaboration uh, channel here but uh, also here now you'll see that we have a different set of users so this is members for that specific channel. So now what I can do here is I can say, hey, you know, you can either do it here, by the way, or you can actually do it within the actual channel itself. So again, if I go into external collab and again, I'll say, hey, do I want to share this channel? You can share it with people in the organization, with a team or with a team that you own. Okay. So what I want to do now is I'm just going to flip over to my other tenant and in this other tenant here you can see I've, I've gone ahead and created an account for myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop over to here and I'm just going to copy this email across email address across here. All right so I'm just going to copy that and um, now that I've done that, I'm going to flip back to my main tenant and I'm now going to, let's um, bring this user in. So I'm going to share the channel. I'm going to share the channel with people and I'm now going to paste this external user in. And as the user comes in, you can see that it brings it in as an external user. All right. And I'm now going to say, yes, I now want to share this with Andy. OK, so now you can see that Andy is now a member. So if I now click on close, so what does that look like? So I'm just flipping over here to Andy's tenant and I'm going to come here now into Microsoft Teams. And let's have a look. OK, so look, there we go. So I didn't have to switch tenants in any way. Um, I've got my own organization, my own team that I'm, mem I'm a member of. And you can see it says here, Syskit Corp. So I can click into that. But look, I don't get access to the entire tenant, only the shared channel. 
Isn't that cool? That is such a powerful feature and that is going to save so much time. So there you have it, part four on our series on secure external collaboration in Microsoft 365, shared Teams channels. Isn't that such a cool feature? Uh, hey, listen, I really hope that you enjoyed this session and indeed all the other sessions as well. Please do remember to hit that like button up there. It really does make a difference to the channel. And also, if you've not subscribed, then please go ahead, hit the subscribe button and uh, click the notifications bell as well. And you'll be notified of any new videos. All right. Now, uh, just like to mention Syskit and their fantastic collaboration management and governance platform, Syskit Point. Definitely, if you want to know more about that, click the link down below uh, at the end of the video. All right. So thank you so much. I'm Andy Malone, and I really do appreciate you dropping by. Take care, and we'll see you next time. <music>